back to another special edition of the Dirty Burger Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Peter Taft, dressed today as Bill's favorite movie character, Forrest Gump. We're going to talk about some movies later, but until we get to that, I'm your co-host, Kyle Herbert, here as always with Bill Ogden. And we have two very special guests on a very spooky edition of The Dirty Verdict. Mm. Mark Thiessen. Mark Thiessen and his lovely wife, Kelly Thiessen. Criminal lawyers extraordinaire. We cannot wait to talk to you guys because you guys are literally the two most awesome people on the internet and on Facebook. And I'm super excited that you guys are here. Mark and I actually went to law school together a long time ago. I don't remember if we were in the same section. Section C. Yeah, Section C. I think I was in Section C. And then we worked very briefly at the same terrible firm, I think for a couple of weeks. Uh, but that is a wonder, uh, water under the bridge. What do you guys do now? Yeah. Uh, well, we started our own firm, Thiessen Law Firm, and I handle all the criminal stuff. And I mean, technically he started it. I just came in when he decided to bless me with marriage. Um, but Made I- Made it to the top. <laughs> Stop. The old fashioned. The old fashioned. We should have retired then. <laughs> what kind of stuff do you handle, Tally? I do actually a majority family law. Oh my God. Yeah. So I started out criminal, but then now um, his practice kind of bled into creating family law. So I do about 85% family these days. Wait, so the crim some of the criminals you represented decided to start families and then that turned into family law? Now getting arrested kind of leads to divorce. Oh. Or when you're going through a divorce, you get arrested a lot of times. I can yeah. see how that's going to Yeah, I'll do it. Let me see how that preserves. Mm -hmm. now, Mark, who are you dressed as today? The one and only Johnny Lawrence. Uh -huh. Johnny motherfucking Lawrence. <laughs> From uh, The Karate Kid. Yes. Are you going to sweep the leg for us later? He already swept mine. I saw you live it. Why did you pick me? He just took that big guy. I was like, he's a big dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he just got the biggest down the yard. When you're new to a when you're new to a social situation, you got to take him the biggest dude there. Yeah, I'm not intimidating looking. Yeah. Bill, what are who are you dressed as? So I'm not gonna say the quote, but in the movie Old School, there's a guy that knocks on the door early, and they open the door, and he says, "I'm here for an event." Um, and it's that guy. His name is Todd Phillips. He's a great actor. Um, but he only has like the four words in the movie. They're highly offensive, but Josh is playing right now next to me on the screen. So is, is, wait to see. is he also in The Hangover? Is he in the elevator in The Hangover? Because you look like that guy too. Maybe. Okay. Or maybe. Josh is going to real a lot of people you could read. And, yeah. And most of them are from the 80s and they did adult films. But hey, that's neither here nor there. Also, we will forget, but we should recognize and maybe we can put up photos later. But our amazing support staff, Amanda Orr and Josh Belland, also showed up dressed today. Josh as some sort of awesome pirate, and Amanda as a kitty cat in a pink coat. Um, all right. Hopefully we get a photo of that. I think she's the pink panther. Yeah. And we'll put that up. So, Mark, you grew up in Houston. Born and raised. Uh, Kincaid High School. Yes. Tally, where are you from? I'm actually from Kansas. Holy Kansas. Cow. The good part or the hey. part? I mean, is there a bad part of Kansas? Yes, I've been to Liberty. It's a meat packing place. Yeah. <laughs> God's people. It smells. God, it's like, yeah. That smell They're down of the money. Yeah. They're down that's the what we, we, we say. That's between, the smell of money. Between Liberty and Guymon, <laughs> Oklahoma, yes. there's not a lot there, but a lot of injured people that are meat packers. So are you a Rock Chalk Jayhawk fan? Because they had a fantastic weekend. So I will tell you, in Kansas, we are very supportive of our state. So you support Kansas basketball and K-State football. Okay. All right. Well, so we don't, you don't have to divide the party line. What do you do with Kansas football? Because they State football. They, they did because, oh, no, not Kansas State. Kansas. They beat OU. K no. They hopped, pounded OU. Who do you think about OU? Who do you, OU? OU's got a big win this year. Who's that against? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I just can't clearly remember by me. more than seven games. <laughs> well, that's good. That, that means, yeah. Well, what was it? What, what, what was the big one? There you go. <laughs> and where'd you go to college? I uh, went to West Texas A&M. Oh, okay. And then Texas Tech Law School. And we have a Division One athlete at our table as well. You played sports. D2, yeah. Oh, D2. D2, D2. Let me, hold on. Basketball or volleyball? Basketball and soccer. Hey, oh. uh, where? West Texas A&M. Is that the one with the movie about the, the male team where they had the immigration of that's UTEP. race? That's UTEP. UTEP. Is that UTEP? No, I think it's Western. It was Texas Western. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, that's Canyon. Mm -hmm. Is it town? Yep. Where she, 
for people in Texas don't realize how cool that area is. What's what's the uh, national or the state park that's there? But it's Aladaro Canyon. Yeah, Aladaro Canyon. Yeah, that is really nice. It's beautiful. So, it's got a huge production every year. Texas. It's like an outdoor Broadway. It's, it's amazing. Okay, so for I don't know if it's in the travel budget. Yeah, or the he, podcast, he never clears any of our budget ideas. Well, it's, it's approved in Amarillo, and then you just drive with 30 minutes yep. south of Amarillo. So we'll go to the big Texan, go to the Texas. I got to believe Cadillac Ranch. Ranch. Cadillac Ranch, yeah. And, uh, and circle back maybe down to Lubbock, no. or where you were at the law school. Is that right? Yep, amazing. Yeah. Where, where in Kansas did you grow up? What's the name of the town? Uh, Plains, which is close to Guyman. No, no, it's the next. <laughs> what were the chances that I shit on the <laughs> one place in Kansas she's kind of from? Like, is it is it anywhere? I mean, there's Tesca? like there's like ten Tesca people is? in Kansas, so you were bound to like throw a dart and hit. That's fair. Do you know where Tescott is? No, yeah. Tescott, Kansas. It's even smaller, named after T. E. Scott, so they call it Tescott. Tescott. Why do you know that? Because it's a lot of Kansas, and a lot of a lot of people I are, that are near and dear to me uh, are live in live in Tescott, Kansas. A lot of viewers and listeners are very confused. Well, I bet they're like amazing people. Look, why? Um, Mark, where did you go to college? I went to Trinity after, after uh, Kincaid and then got in some trouble at Trinity and uh, weeded out of pre-med and ended up at TCU. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, we had a guy, no, no, he was at SMU. Sorry, it's are we not the same thing. No, 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 <laughs> not the same thing. So <laughs> did you always know you wanted to go to law school? No, no, I was going to be at... Dad's a physician, mom's a dentist, so I was encouraged to be a doctor my whole life. Okay. And it was... What kind of doctor? I was going to be a plastic surgeon. Yeah, you, yeah. No, I'm to, <laughs> to really help the people. Yeah, <laughs> 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 bringing joy and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The ones that make cat. <laughs> yeah. I knew, I knew it wasn't taking health care and insurance. So at some point, did you figure out you were bad at science and math, or you just decided you liked the law better? How did you make that decision? It was uh, freshman year at Trinity, taking... Because I thought I was, you know, intelligent. So I took well, some Trinity's molest. A, Trinity is a smart kid school. It was a great school. I, it was my stretch school and I got in and I probably shouldn't have. Yeah. I should have just gone somewhere and made all A's, you know. But it was cell molecular biology, organic chemistry, to calculus, physics, and English my first semester. Who are, who are you? And I put <laughs> and I put on um, 30 pounds that first semester. Yeah. And came home with a shaved head and like a 2.4. Yeah. <laughs> I tell people uh, I took quantum history. That's not really a subject. <laughs> I was a history major. We didn't do, I didn't take any math at all. So that's fine. I didn't know. Anything. Brutal. All right, criminal justice degree. So what, what made you decide on law school? I'm like looking at her. I'm like, are we going to tell about this? Yeah. I got in trouble a few times in college and managed to get out of all of them. And I kind of found a knack for uh, evading being a criminal attorney. It's all expunged. You can't actually find any of it. But <laughs> I, I mean, I should come clean. You and I have a lot of friends in common. Yeah. And a, a whole ton of acquaintances in common. Yeah. And I tell people all the time, they figure out that we know each other. And I say, I'm going to tell you guys, be careful the judgments you make about people the first time you meet them. Because if I had to go back in time to 2000 or 2001, I would have guessed you would not ever have gotten a job as a lawyer or <laughs> passed the bar. I, I can see that. But I say this as a compliment to you, which is you have found... The one, not the one thing, I, you have found something that you love and that you're great at, and I think I know you well to say this, something that fits your personality perfectly. Getting out of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you, I showed up to, to uh, South Texas with frosted tips. I worked at Abercrombie. Yeah. You know, just wanted to go to Thursday night happy hour and party. Then pass finals every once a semester. I'm glad I didn't wear a pair of jeans and no shirt as now I'm coming model today. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be weird right now. That's all right. Next segment. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm so, so Abercrombie's making a comeback. Mm -hmm. And I've thought. Are they? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, there's an Abercrombie at the gallery and there's one in Memorial City Mall. And I don't know if you guys are going to have time for this, but maybe next Tuesday, the four of us, just shirtless, oh. jeans, and we just hang out at the Abercrombie entrance. And you know, like how their models used to do. Abercrombie dads? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like Abercrombie. I don't read that. I mean, uh, that's why they're a resurgence, though. They're all about it. Like, we're going to have like, it. the aero pants yeah. for the dads, cargo shorts, and oh, yeah. like baggy shirts, maybe. I will say, they made unbreakable clothing. 
Like, if you bought it back then, it's still perfect today. But like, you cannot wear it. It's frayed. Yeah, it's frayed. It, it looked distressed. It's still distressed. Yeah, yeah. still distressed. And holy It looks guy. like it did when it, you took it off of the hanger. Tally, same question. How did you end up in law school from Texas Western? West Texas a <laughs> West Texas a and No affiliation a and M. No. He's a UT guy. Well, and I'm a tech girl, so. Um, well, I, I actually went to college to be a broadcaster. Uh, I wanted to do the news. And then I realized kind of what they got paid and realized that, that was really not going to work for me. So last semester of college kind of was out of the options. Wasn't going to be a doctor. Thought, let's take the LSAT. Cool. Here I am. My, I have a younger cousin who was on the volleyball team in college. And she's very tall and mm -hmm. she's very pretty. She got all the good genes from our entire family. <laughs> and she's a broadcaster. She does the sports in Dallas. Her name is Peyton Yeager. Hello, Peyton. <laughs> and, uh, it's a really cool job. Are you, like, you pr mm -hmm. so proud of your cousin, Garrett? And this being, you know, I, right. she went to UT undergrad and I see her every year at the OU game. And I yell, she's like six foot one and blonde and just gorgeous. And I'll yell, Peyton, and of course she thinks like I'm some random creeper and she, she'll run away. I'm like, it's your cousin. And she's like, oh, okay. So she'll come ahead with her. <laughs> she just Every the, year she runs. It's amazing. Yes. But she, does, she then takes the mace out when she realizes who it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, runs, she runs through like, is this going to be embarrassing at Thanksgiving when my parents yell at me for being mean to my cousin? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, the, the reality is my mom and her mom are sisters. I mean, we're not made up cousins. Like, we are direct cousins within two yeah. degrees of consanguinity and you would put the two of us next to each other and you'd be like no 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 like, that didn't use that continuity term to consanguinity when consanguinity yeah to press out it's I like one of those three things I, did. I learned in law school can you but you have to be more than one degree of consanguinity to That's, get married or i'm not i'm not sure about texas or kansas we can talk about that offline <laughs> <laughs> all right well i want to go to a serious Serious point, because this came up a couple of times more uh, on why you decided to be a lawyer. So you had some issues in college and a, some lawyers helped you out. And oh, yeah. You know, I want to do that and help people out when they're at a tough spot in their life. I would say that was how it started. You know, like I would, I would got into trouble. I mean, it was stupid stuff like fake ID, stealing signs from a bar during a fraternity prank, you know, nice. then getting in like a fraternity fight. And we we're all, you know, paddy wagon. We're all getting in trouble and having fun. And then um, I was like, I mean, I was a marketing major at TCU. Again, figured out how much people in marketing get paid. Did not want to do that. Realized you can take the LSAT with any degree. And took that. And I was like, yeah, I guess I'll try law school. And then I thought I was going to do criminal law. And I actually shied away from it. That's why Kyle and I used to work together. Because I was like, I can't hang out with criminals all day. I'm going to turn into a criminal. And I realized I was already in a past alleged criminal. This will be all right. They're cool with me. Mm -hmm. So like MS-13 does our... AC at the house in my at my house in my office. Like he loves me, you know. He may be a gangster and deadly, but loves me. We represent him like six times. He's great. They have to file taxes too. Yep, that's that called recidivism. There. That's called recidivism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I where first job was a civil defense. Were, first shot, job was in admiralty because I finished law school as a cop. It's like, I can't believe this guy passed. I went to law school in Hawaii for eight months and came back because you only had to do 60 hours at South Texas. So I took 30 hours in Malta, London, and then Hawaii. Came back, got my degree, took the bar. I was doing Admiralty for Bell Reinecker, Letourneau, and Newark. Great place. And I did that for about a year, but it wasn't like the Admiralty that I did in Hawaii. And so I left there to go to Brown Sims to do insurance defense. And I just, I just kept giving all the money away for people that were injured. And they're like, you don't have the right temperament for this. And I was like, he lost an arm, give him all the money. So then I left and actually went to uh, Trick Dern Murphy and worked for them for five and a half years. Kept taking pay cuts all the way down. And my parents thought I was an idiot. So look at it, look at you now, right? Was, who's the idiot now? Yeah, mom and dad. With a surgeon. Trick Dern Murphy, was we doing all kinds of criminal work or primarily DWI? I know that so they do a ton yeah, of DWI. It's all pretty much DWI. I think at that time they were all DWI and that's all I was doing. And actually, they were who I hired when, small story, not too many people know this because it got expunged, but this is actually where I did find my calling for DWI. I was leaving 4th of July 
in uh, Lukenbach from Willie Nelson's 4th of July picnic in 2003 <laughs> while we were supposed to be studying for the bar. And I was super hot that year and I was hung over as shit, but I still smelled like alcohol, right? So I'm driving my buddy Ross's Suburban through Hunt into Kerrville and Ross's Suburban, because Ross is hammered, Ross Suburban has the gate on the back and he's got a cooler. And I'm not swerving, I'm not speeding, nothing. Trooper pulls me over because obstructed license plate. And my buddy Guy was sitting behind the driver's seat, was real fucked up and throwing up. I had puked all the way down the driver's side. So by the time the cop comes up to the window, there's puke all the up on the driver's side and I smell like alcohol. And I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do that, you know? And, he, and that's what they call probable cause in the movie. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's gonna prolong the detention. <laughs> and I was sitting in the Gaddy's parking lot in Kerrville. Oh, and I'm like having an yeah. anxiety attack. And he's like, do you wanna take this breath test? And I'd always heard on the, on the news, like, don't take the breath test or heard it around. To, and back then it was, actually, I should have just taken the breath test. Then I would have, they would have known I wasn't intoxicated. But it was bad advice then. It's still bad advice. I was like, I refused. They arrested me. And I had to sit in jail. And I was like, I'm supposed to be taken. Bar exam was July 31st. <laughs> I was in jail July 5th. <laughs> that's after hey, the bar. Yeah, hey, I had to come part of That was in Kerr County. Yeah. But I got it. It was dismissed. There was no probable cause. They're like, he looks normal. He's just having a panic attack. And I was like, this is crazy because you are, it takes, it's very easy to get arrested. And I was like, what? I didn't do anything wrong. I was hung over. I wasn't intoxicated at all. But then I had to fight it. It got dismissed. Got it expunged. Oh, yeah. But that was really my first calling. And I was like, you don't have to be intoxicated to get arrested. It was interesting sitting in there. I remember when uh, Trichter had those ads on the radio. He's like the cowboy. Yeah. I think he still does. Yeah, is that, uh, what, did, what did they say officially as far as if you get pulled over, or you should? That's, I mean, it's a hot contention. I think Tyler bought do not blow.com back in 2000. So he stopped with do not blow, but I adamantly disagree with that. I think that I have like six reasons why you should blow. And I think that the new course of business is take the breath test. If you have it, if you're not intoxicated. No, I, I say, even if you are intoxicated, take the breath test. Okay. I'm going to tell you why. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I mean, first, he, there's for six, Peter's benefit. Now there's six. Yeah, it's for there's Peter. six reasons. Right. a problem. First one, when you refuse the breath test, they get to tell the jury he refused because he knew he was intoxicated, right? Number two, they can't test your breath for drugs. So if you got weed or pill, you know, if you smoked weed last night, you still have weed in your system. They can't, they'll never know whether you're on any drugs on a breath test. Number three... Uh, juries trust blood more than they do breath, right? And you're like, well, and it, so it's kind of hard with CSI. Number four, in Houston, they're going to get your blood no matter what, right? Like they're going to get it no matter what. If you refuse the breath test, we got 24 seven warrants. They're going to go get your blood. They're going to dry your blood and all these other reasons. Number five, um, counties like Montgomery County won't let you in to pretrial intervention, like a quick six month probation when you get it dismissed. Montgomery County, if you don't blow, they don't care who you are, doctor, lawyer, president, you didn't blow because you followed an old billboard, you don't get into that program. <laughs> and then number six, I know your breath test right there that week, that week. Blood testing takes five months. So for five months, I'm sitting there going, wonder what your blood is, wonder what your blood is while you're going through the stress, having to have the blow machine in your car, all these other things, where had you just done the breath, man, we can start fighting it immediately, right? And that shit number seven that that machine's a hunk of junk i don't even really hire an expert that much it is a hunk of junk and that's one thing that i think i think maverick ray talked about in an earlier yeah. hell is like learning the science of the breath test and yeah there's multiple uh see i guess you can say cle's which you know continually yeah. out them that but you you're kind of one of the guys who's known for being really good on that stuff yeah uh, so how have you how have you established that how have you learned that i think well then it goes back to my I like science back in the day. I really actually did like science. And so then I've gone to these different seminars and st I mean, it's just science, but that, I mean, no machine is infallible. So once you realize the science, you realize where the issues can come in and then no operator, no person operating that machine is infallible. But I get these experts up and I go, tell the lady, I actually tell them now, I'm like, show the ladies and gentlemen with your fingers, how many times you've messed up. And these people, and like people that work for HPD or these government labs will look at the jury and be like, Zero. And Jerry's like, fuck that. You know, nobody's flawless. You know, Elon Musk, his, his, you know, billion dollars and all these scientists from MIT make mistakes. NASA makes mistakes, but our police labs say they're flawless. So it's, I go it, after independent submarine construction companies make mistakes every once in a while. Once in a while. Yeah. Speaking of which, have you guys seen that movie Titanic? 
We watched it yet? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, do it. Tell about the movie where the artist draws the naked woman in the jewel. In no, the sir. No, sir. No, sir. Let Bill crap on it. No. Never. I am never. <laughs> I'm talking about the movie <laughs> where an engaged woman meets a homeless man, uses him as an excuse to steal from her fiance, and then later lets the homeless man freeze to death and takes his name. And that's the movie I'm talking about. Horrible movie. If that's your favorite movie, get over there with the Forrest Gump people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might not anyway. What are you doing next week? Shit on your other favorite movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Snow White is next week. It's a door. Bring it on. White. It's a giant. Snow White. It's a giant <laughs> oak door, Rose. There's room enough for two people not to freeze to death. Yeah. Rose Dawson. Sign your last name. Uh, 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 last name. How did he get into the Titanic? Billy, because uh, uh, Billy Zane's an amazing actor. Yeah, they're talking about submarines. Still. Oh, so I'm a submarine builder. By the way. No, isn't it Billy Zing? Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, he's also in Back to the Future, the first one. He's also in a lot of Zedag yeah. software. The Mummy? The, the Mummy. Yes, yeah. he, is. he is the Mummy. He is the Mummy. And Phantom? Fa he is the fan Phantom. That's a, that's a stretch. That's I the, the, the movie. Movie. Yeah. great movie. He's a terrible movie. He's very good in Zoolander. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Billy Zane. <laughs> You're a real cool guy. He was in Zoolander. <laughs> yeah. oh. He does the, uh, the pose. I can be for that. Yeah. So, Tally, family law. So, you started, well, first of all, how did you get to Houston for a break? Like I say. <laughs> yeah. um, I, well, I met him in Lubbock when we were doing a CLE. We were putting on a CLE and he was speaking. And so, that's when I met him and got married and I moved here for him. You were working for a firm in Lubbock? Uh -huh. I was doing mostly criminal defense there, though. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then came out here, worked with uh, Mark, and then slowly immigrated over to the family law side? Yep. And so what would you say if someone says, well, what do you think you've done both? Would you honestly like family law better? Why, why is that? I think family law is better for me personally, just because I'm very analytical and I like the transactional work of it. Obviously he is crazy creative and criminal defense is a lot of uh, theater and just kind of like showmanship. And that's why he excels. Not only is it because he's like great at science, but then he has that like showmanship quality. <laughs> as far as family law, we actually pay attention to the code and we, you know, actually look at the laws. He's like, don't show me that. I don't give a shit. Uh, yeah. You're, I just want to show me you. Yep. That was the yep. yeah. Yeah. nicest way anybody has said someone else is full of shit. <laughs> 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 it's like, it's a lot of showmanship. <laughs> I tell my associates, we're never going to let our ability to argue be limited by the facts or the law. 100% mm -hmm. agree with that. She'll be like, Mark, that's not what the law is. I was like, I don't give a shit what the law is. I'm going to still yeah. argue it. That's the judge's job. Now I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I am. Which is good up to a point, and I think it's my job to kind of like grab him when we're getting to that point of like absurdity. Yeah, yeah. And just being contempt and yeah. losing our you know board certifications and things like that. Let's <laughs> let's take a step that behind man. that one. That's an yeah. interesting point. Can you lose a board cert? Yes. I did not know. If you get held in contempt, Mark would help. If you get held in contempt, I was in trouble. If you get held in contempt, they take you. Your board and certs are up for up for. Um, Review. I'll review. I'll be done. Yeah. So, so take it to a, a point. Push it to the limit. Is there a particular kind of family law that you like to do, like contested stuff? Or I'll tell you who loves to hire her. her. I'll tell you who loves to hire her. Yeah. The the men love to hire Tally, and then they get to go see their, their wife that they're divorcing, and the wife's like, oh, I'm sure that's your fucking lawyer. Oh, yeah. Six foot blonde comes in, and then she's mean, too. Yeah. She's mean to them. They're like, I like it. Oh. So half my money's paying for her. <laughs> That's the hard part for sure. You know, I'd like to see that. I'd like to go. They're sleeping together. I mean, like, dad's all the time. Oh, yeah. They, and then the, they send me the text messages too. Like, I know you're just sleeping with your lawyer. I'm just like, I didn't need to see them. Thank you, though. That is so, she doesn't have time to sleep with them. I know. <laughs> I, mean, I always just turn them over right back in discovery. <laughs> that <with> the <laughs> other lawyer. <laughs> nice. So, Mark, do the judges, I mean, you're a known quantity in, in Houston, for sure. Do the judges kind of know, like, they're going to get Mark Thiessen treatment at, at, at Trump? Uh, I would say sometimes, but some wrangle me in, but some are, some judges are like, I want to see the show, or they let me try it, but then we've got a whole bunch of new judges. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I've heard you were good. I want to see what you got. And I was like, just stay out of my way, judge. Just let me put on the show. Yeah, right. And I've had judges that are like, we have all these kids here from interim term in high school. I'm scheduling, <laughs> I'm scheduling Thiessen to come put on a show. And she's like, 
just give him a shout piece. And I was like, okay, that's fun. That's yeah. Better. I'm like, great. I like that. Is most of your stuff in Harris County or are you yeah, traveling? Yeah, most in Harris. And that, but I was in Brazoria this morning, Galveston. I do not like to go up to Montgomery. Wonderful place to live. My parents live there, but terrible place to get arrested. They do not appreciate tomfoolery up there. And they put uh, the pictures, arrest, what do you call the- Oh, yeah, your mugshot. Uh, yeah. On the, in the internet, and then you've seen the billboards that are like, you're entering Montgomery County. We prosecute in this county. Yeah, Fort Ben, I think, does that too. Yeah, I'm a couple county water. We're not so bad. Throw them up. Try to shame you and be, you know. But his last couple of trials have been in Colorado. Yeah. Mm. Expanding. So, so that was my next question. Yeah, that's kind of a three parter. Uh, what are you guys doing in Colorado? How are you getting cases there? And why did you decide to do that? We're both licensed in Colorado. So whenever we go up there, I think we were actually there. practicing there. Okay. I thought we were just going to ski. Yeah, and then <laughs> you got, oh, you're, now you're working. Well, I was like, well, if we're going to go up there and I need to go up there for Friday court and then, you know, maybe turn it into skiing on the weekend, like I need to make sure that I've got a website, I've got a, uh, I've got a, what do you call it? Um, what's the piece of paper? <laughs> Oh, I have some license. I have, yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of pieces of paper that I need. What hell? We said five. One important one. Not the header. What's our our? Letterhead. Yeah, letterhead. We got letterhead website. I've got uh, business cards. We got pens. I give out all these gold pens at all the bars because I mean it's Aspen, and then all my cards are gold mirrors because there's a lot of cocaine up there. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. There's a lot of cocaine in Aspen. There, allegedly. I was in Aspen for my birthday in August. Not a one person offered me any cocaine. You didn't get a gold. You look like a. You don't have a gold cord. The <laughs> <laughs> gold mirrors either. And so you should go out like that. You know, yeah, I'm I'm not, I'm not, I'm definitely. I'm definitely. I could get cocaine in Jackson Hole. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, and that's so we try and then I do a little SEO and I have a local buddy or a buddy up there that went to St. John's and he was actually the DA up there so. I split my cases with them. And now what I've realized is that a lot of people don't want to ruffle feathers. It's a real small town, right? And they don't want to ruffle feathers. So they're like, I want to just stay friends with everybody. But Mark Thiessen will come in and try. And I'm like, fuck yeah, well, like, I'll yeah. come in and try. So they hire me. And then they're ha my co-counsel is hanging out with the judge and being nice to the DA the whole time. And they're like, oh, Mr. Thiessen's here. Cause of problems, trying case. I'm like, it's the Constitution. Yeah, we're allowed to do this. You shouldn't trial tax us. But I mean, it's tough. It's a tough county. It's very aggressive there. Yeah, that's it. Very aggressive. Pitkin, Pitkin County. Pitkin. Yeah, but I'd go up to like Steamboat. Oh, or we talk, great county. Uh, Elk County Capital, Hayden. I mean, there's a totem pole in front of the courthouse. The people were so eager and happy. Great county. But Aspen, like I had Obermeyer's grandson on there on a jury panel. We had millionaires. We have billionaires. We have like people that work in restaurants. It's crazy to see the people that show up for jury oh. service. In yeah. Aspen, let me let me go into Steamboat. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So West Wall, one of my partners, uh, he lives up there full time, and he knows he's the mayor. He knows really everybody in the okay. town. Because I need somebody up there. Because people still call me because I want a case up there. I want. I mean, yeah. If you, if you got something where you got to just do a quick research or something, like West lives there. I mean, the court. Yeah. It's it, the whole city is a walkable place. Yeah, I think. If you're going to buy a house in Colorado right now, I think Steamboat is a hidden gem because you can fly direct from Houston to Steamboat. It's 15 minutes from the airport. So it's none of the, and it's way too far from everybody from Denver to drive. And it's still priced like around a million less than a million for normal house. Yeah, not anymore. About so two and a half years ago, Vail bought the mountain. So uh -huh. it's gone up a little bit, but nothing, it's not crazy. It's not like, crazy yet. It, it's not as I'm crazy. Yeah. Not only really anybody here. Is Eagle is still you. 45 minutes from Vail. You know, Crested Butte's an hour to Gunnison and all those. And like Denver is two hours, maybe three hours on that. I think that Aspen's great because it's 15 minutes from town. Steamboat's 15 minutes from town. Even Jackson Hole, which I love, but yeah. it's 45 minutes from, you know, the mountain to the town. And I'm like, you know, so we've done a lot of research there. So here, here's my segue question. Yeah, about Colorado. All right. So uh, I've known you for 20 years. We're Facebook friends where I get most of my decent updates. <laughs> All right. So it's like. It's skiing, it's scuba diving, it's jumping out of a plane, setting fire to somebody and tackling a wrestling. Like, <laughs> you do everything crazy, and it doesn't surprise me at all that you have offices in Aspen and probably in all kinds of other crazy places soon enough. So, is it, you just have, you've just got so much energy? Like, what is the idea? What's the thought process? Or you just have like just an incredible amount of gusto for life? Where does all that come from? 
I confiscate a lot of crystal meth from my clients. I was going to say, it's, it's either you love life <laughs> or it's a ton of cocaine. It's a blue sky. And honestly, somebody told me, it was like, oh, there's a guy at the PD's yeah. office, Damon at the PD's office. Hey, Damon. He was, we took him to the Astros game and he's like, yeah, people in the PD's office would be like, I think Thiessen knows where to get coke. And I'm like, actually, I mean, Aspen, but other than that, I don't do coke. Like, I don't need to fucking do coke. Right. So I'm too wild already. Yeah. I like I looked like a cop when I was in Aspen. Yeah, you, you just like that. You gotta I guess like old, nobody yeah. altered. They're really like, that guy's definitely a cop. Yeah. But, uh, like the main coffee shop in Aspen, their sign says the second best stimulant in Aspen. So, like, no, I saw her. I think about Like they own it that there's a lot of coke. Yeah. I know this. Yeah. I'm well. But I, I just have energy. I think it, I th well, I learned a psychological trick early on that it was like, hey, because I have fear of missing out. I want to do everything. And they're like, mm -hmm. dude, why don't we go to the bar? Why don't we drink? I wish I could be drinking with y'all on a Monday night, but I train tomorrow morning at 5.30 in the morning. So I tr triggered my brain that I'm not saying no to drinking, you know, because then I feel bad. I'm saying yes to working out. And my dad always taught me, like, get up early, healthy, wealthy, make, you know, early to bed, early to rise, makes a young man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Well, you remember, you dressed the part. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember Russell Austin? Judge Russell Austin taught... Uh, Will's Trust in Estates when we were in South Texas. Yes, yeah. okay, okay. So I interned with him for two years. I was his clerk. And he always told me, he was a little bit of a lady, ladies' man. And uh, he, he used to tell me, Kyle, early to bed, early to rise, all the best girls will go out with other guys. <laughs> and that's what Kyle flung on to. So that's why they're not dating me. I'm not 100% sure what he meant. <laughs> But I, you know, I get, well, because you're going to bed early while everybody else is drinking and hanging out and getting laid. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I've, I've kept that close to my heart. It's part of my kind of uh, philosophy as a lawyer. But that's his yeah. mantra. My I'm freedom. glad wherever you heard yours, like, forgot that second part. Yeah. Obviously, because he has a tendency to get things stuck in his brain and never forget them. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Tell us about your martial arts training. <laughs> uh, so I was, well, <laughs> I'll tell you how that came about. So I was going through a, a divorce. And we're going to a therapist. Well, I think we were just going to a therapist before the divorce. And she's like, you got a lot of energy. You need to get that energy out. And I, she's like, you should try fencing. And I was like, fuck, am I going to do a fencing? Fencing? How about and, bow staff fight? And I was, that would be rad, you know? Yeah. That, like, ninja stuff. But ninja. it's pretty fun to build a fence. I'm just saying. Paint the fence? Yeah. But anything but done. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, my buddy Billy Brandenburg was taking jujitsu. And I was like, I've always heard that. Let me go try it. And it was a lot of wrestling with other men, which I was kind of into also. Yeah. Well, guilty. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. Alien, just, it's, it's like MMA with a lot of punching and kicking, minus the punching and kicking. Yeah. Is Brian Beckham and he real big into that? Yeah, he is. I heard him on a, listen to his podcast. Yeah, he, he, he pushes a super big. I'm good friends with him. He's a fucking beast. He's a monster. He is. Yeah. I trained during COVID when the world was shut down. He's got a gym in his office. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're only like, he used to let me come work out at his gym. And then we would go to Gracie Baja in the Heights. And it was just like, hey, where were you this weekend? I don't fucking know. You want to roll around and we could die because I don't know where the fuck you've been. Yeah. I think we're, we're set. So Hunter Port, me, Anthony Push will go train jujitsu. Just risk it. But he's. He's fucking strong. Dude, he's a wild. Yeah. He, so there's been multiple videos of him like going in Costa Rica. He's a big snake guy. Yeah. He just like jump off a balcony into the jungle and come back up with this giant snake. He's like, look, yes. I saw. I'm like, what is wrong with him? He's got like pit vipers. He's got like yeah. 45 of the deadliest snakes in the world. He owns any feeds of like dead rats and everything. He's a cool dude. They have he dude. So push it with push away. And they have the most amazing billboards on the right. planet. I know she well as well. Yeah, and they have two tortoises, and they named them Pain and Suffering, which I love. Was, and they keep them; they're the pets at the office because at their office is on Forty Five South. Yeah, they have Forty Five is in uh, MMA, whatever ring, one stop shop. Uh, if you have your oil, they can do that too. They are. Yeah, they got everything. They've got the most. They got archery in the back. They bought that lamb, but in between the, it's an old funeral home. They have a full badass weight gym, you know, and then he has some mats where you can roll but it, yeah it's just because they're both big workout guys and they never leave the office so they say okay we're going to present our client for deposition here at the mma room hold on oh uh, it's game off of yeah i didn't look, look, look. Oh, and then friday you have to walk through the this. snake room friday is uh in you know like for margarita yeah. tequila and they've got all these stuffed animals and stuff like bears and gators and crazy shit it is wild in there it's yes. awesome they're the, they're two very unique guys i love them both today. yeah they're they're awesome Okay. Well, I think we know we we're gonna ask next. Yeah, oh, I mean, but we're doing we'll have them here. just to go through the different billboards they've done. 
Because right now, they, the two of them are like, some of lounged out at a pumpkin patch. Yeah. Pumpkin patch. And yeah. like before that, they had like, she's holding brothers. Pumpkins. like this. Uh, yeah. Movie, uh, like, the one that says, our moms think we're the best lawyers in Houston. Yeah. So they've done, like, I mean, they've done a ton of awesome billboards. And now I was just driving through uh, San Antonio. They got billboards all over San Antonio. San Antonio, Austin. Yeah, they're all, they're branched yeah. now. They're getting big for sure. Yeah. Awesome. So if they yeah. want to refer me any of those big cases, I'm over here, guys. Come on. Yeah. Speaking of, just to go a little sideways, since we talk about verdicts sometimes, Bill, would you like to talk about your firm's recent verdict? Yeah. Is this like recent being? Sure. Uh, as of like four hours ago, they got uh, West Wall, Kyle Ferry, Kyle Farah, and Dan Sherry Jr. And I'll put an emphasis on the junior because Dan and I are arch nemesis. <laughs> um, they sued Mitsubishi on a seatbelt defect called rip stitch, I believe is what it's called. Um, but it's a seatbelt failure defect case. Uh, they tried it for the last two weeks in Philadelphia and got $176 million in compensatory damages. And then the jury added another $800 million in punitives. So $976 million. And uh, one guy was quadriplegic. Okay. And that is in Philadelphia. Uh, what you, it's last uh, court, uh, court of Common Pleas in Philadelphia. That wasn't the common. That wasn't the common plea. Oh yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was a plea for you know all the money. And then <laughs> last Friday, I think Arnold Hake, Jason Itkin, or Arnold Aitken obtained a and uh, Specter, um, Klein and Spe Klein Specter were, were the, and they obtained what one hundred seventy five million. So we, I know that because somebody pointed out that ours compensatory before we knew the punitives was one hundred seventy six. So yeah, you know, I'm not competitive or anything. I mean, yeah. there's nobody that competes with those guys right now. Yeah, I'm not even gonna try. But we have a verdict that can compete. We you know we can put it next to some of theirs from so, this year. So Bill, does that mean you now have the second largest verdict in the history? Yeah, for I no longer hold the record for the largest. And, and not only that, so we settled ITC. So now I no longer even have the biggest case. But I also don't have the biggest verdict. Seventy million is pocket change in our in our firm now, That's unfortunately. Awesome. And so. Uh, yeah, but I'll just say this: if, if you're not first, you're last. The student, no, yeah. the master, became the student. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Didn't see that one coming. I was riding high. So, Mark and Tally, you guys obviously have a lot of clients. So, what do y'all do when someone comes in and says, "I've been in an auto accident or hurt at work"? Yeah, what do you guys do? These guys you guys are look great, great right now, and I love y'all. I feel great energy. Yeah, students and y'all are y'all are obviously excellent trial lawyers. Yep, and uh, lawyers real large but so can you take that to a to a civil side take that same we're debating on what to do with that right now because for years well shit for years i've been sending it to various different people nobody ever sent me a check right? what what oh, who, who and they just for, to? they just, i'm not gonna say any names it's the best of my job they just forget like oh i forgot that came from the center da -da -da. and so i had one guy that i was uh matt elwell with amaro used yeah. came to work for me and we had a um we had a wrongful death that came in and matt's like i know a guy and he's like i think we need to send this wrong this wrongful death over to john ramsey john ramsey's going to co-counsel oh, with you. so ramsey co-counsel with me two years later he's like hey mark you want to go to lunch and i was like sure and he whips out a check for three hundred eighty six thousand dollars and oh yeah you've got all my business nobody's ever Nobody's ever brought me checks, and he's still, we co-counsel, and we've got a fee agreement with all the, uh, and now he's the first one that actually sends me contracts with my name on it and his name, letting the client, and so, and he keeps on top of it, and I was like, if somebody would just, too many lawyers, you know, they don't think I'd ever know about the verdict, which I wouldn't, how would I ever know about it, you know, or a settlement, I wouldn't know, it. it's on the honor system, and that guy showed his honor to me, so I've been sending all my stuff to uh, John Ramsey lately. So I just have to make you question his honor. Yeah, by challenging him to a duel to the death, John. It's a, John's a great lawyer. It's an honor duel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so the yeah. takeaway is, don't stiff your referral lawyers, and it'll get after. But no, yeah, because that was the only one that was like, because how would I ever know what the settlement was? Like, I don't know. I don't. I forget to follow up with you two years later. You well, know? you know, an ethical lawyer would require you to sign a consent to associate an FP agreement at right. the outset. Mm -hmm. It's almost as though I teach a CLE on this, like at least twice a year, but. But I forget to go look into it, you know, or I print it out or, hey, what other stuff to do? Whatever happened with that? And he's like, oh, that, it, you know, who's to say he would ever be honest? I'm not going to, I trust, I'm very trust, trusting. And so I'd be like, oh, well, I guess it never really panned out. I had no idea, you know, I have no idea. But that's, I think that's the way for all these lawyers, like, we will bring you more money, you know? So it's like, okay. But just so you know. It's better with referrals. Yeah. We well, try to, like, keep track yeah. and, and try to keep you 
abreast of like what clients you send and, and where they're at. So, because people you know, want to know that. But there's so many firms out there that get billion dollar verdicts and they don't maybe have time. Kyle, They're stop small. ragging on it. Like, <laughs> okay, so, all right, let me ask you a different question. Totally different. So you guys have basically worked together for the duration of your relationship. Yes. Yeah. How, do you do you like that? Are there special challenges to it? I mean, you've been doing it for a while. Do, is it? We love it. Is it great? Easy, oh, fun? Amazing. Yeah. So good. You save money on mileage. You just take one car back. And no, it. we do not do that. <laughs> That's a little bit chilly. <laughs> yeah, a little bit too hard. Yeah. What do you drive? I drive the Escalade because I usually get the kids and everything. So. All right. And then what kind of fancy ride will you not let him and his rotten kids into? <laughs> I have an S7. No. See? Well, there you go. That explains it all. I'm a kid still. Well, I have two from a prior marriage. Okay. And then, but she's known him since very young. They're, she will nice. love how, how old? Nine and 11. Yep. Uh, 9 11 can't. You know what I mean? Because we you know, never forget. 9-11. Yeah, but, well, they get older. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right, but right now, of course, ten twelve. Like the first ten twelve is not coming out. Yeah, ten ten twelve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mario, eleven thirteen. Oh, Bill, you are you are good at this live stuff, Bill. <laughs> I'm a number guy. As long as they say nine and eleven, we're good. No bad, good. And how many lawyers are all at the firm? We have five. Dang. So, but we, I mean, we're still doing criminal and. Uh, I picked up one personal injury case because it got all fucked up and now I'm mm -hmm. remembering all of our discovery and doing all of this stuff. And uh, But he was like, you know, I'm not, I go, you're not getting anything off this, but he had knee surgery. So I'm like, in, yes. I, no, we discussed this. Yes, we, we, not, we should discuss it. Yeah. I was like, how, are you, how am I dealing with these guys at the insurance? They're like, well, you complained about, I go, you never complained about his knee ever before. So now I'm trying to figure out what to do and kind of, it was a three-year-old case. Nobody done anything on it. And so I'm trying to scavenge it. I'll send you some discovery. I'll send you some bleedings. I'll help you out completely on that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Bunhead, I've already done that. <laughs> yeah. And look, and look how much help it's given. Yeah. Sorry about that. Maria, so Mark, I mean, have you thought about going in and trying a silver case? I want to so bad. Yeah. And that's why I got saying. one. Well, I gave my sow my Stowers demand and he turned it down and I was like, fuck it. Yeah. Let's do this. I mean, trial. First, I was like, oh, what an asshole. Like, you're not even doing policy limits. And it was like 250. And now I realized that was a blessing because I have nothing to fucking lose. And I even told the client, I think it was like 30,000. He's like, 30,000? Yeah. And I was like, He's like, and I go, dude, I'll give you 30000 if we lose. Let's go for it. Let's go. You, so, so next time, take your attorney's fees out before you guarantee the money. <laughs> so they, I'll give you twenty. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Well, Just backload it that way. Let's see. Let's do that. Yeah. That's it. Pro death. I actually had a case this was a couple of years ago. Uh, it was a motorcycle wreck. Uh-huh. And the damages were, were significant. They were more than 100000 bucks. The policy was hundred grand, And it was crazy because... Uh, you're familiar with this. Cops don't always tell the truth. What? And so it was, it was a massive wreck on I-10 and 45 cool. where an elderly lady cut across a couple lanes and hit my motorcyclist. And the police report said everything was the motorcycle rider's fault and said all kinds of stuff that just could not be true. Like it's just crazy stuff in the police report. Well, I went and got the... The body cam, yep, uh, like that, that is rolling right after the accident happened, and it demonstrably proved that everything that cop wrote in his report was a complete lie. And he has the defendant driver, sweet old lady, on camera saying, "You know, I was in town for my grandson's graduation, and I I wasn't really paying attention. And I'm sorry, but I think I cut this poor young man off, and I think I caused the accident." Well, the police report says the exact opposite. Wow. So I sent a demand letter out. The insurance company uh, said they were still investigating. I filed suit and I sent a Stowers demand the minute that the other side answered. And I called the lawyer. Uh, and it was a young guy, been practicing maybe five years. Uh, his dad was a partner in the firm. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, fair warning, I've sent over the dash cam video and I've sent over the police report and all the medical records and I think you should pay the Stowers. And he said, um, you know, Kyle, I read the police report and I, I don't think, I think you're crazy. There's no way we're ever going to tender. And I said, well, you know, buddy, I've checked up on you. And uh, everybody seems to agree that um, even if you had facts favorable to you, uh, there's no way you could try this case. 
because you are a lily-livered, cowardly idiot who barely got out of law school and only got this job because his mommy and daddy gave it to him. And then I used a, a bunch more bad words uh-huh. and uh, told him to eat several things, and then I hung up. <laughs> and then and I set the Stowers demand to expire in 30 days. And 28 days later, he called me and he said, you know, Kyle, uh, after our last conversation, I went and spoke to my boss about you, and he said, you were a real agreeable fella and didn't understand why you would call me those names. <laughs> and my boss said, he's probably trying to get you angry so you don't respond to the Stowers. So I'm dropping off a check for a hundred grand. Good luck. <laughs> I just saw two things. One, how did he get a motorcycle case? I thought Ball Tigers got all. Hey, you know what? That's what we do at Fair and Ball. If you're in, if you're on a motorcycle, you belong with us. We got all tigers. I don't know if you've ever ridden a motorcycle in a tiger costume, but go ahead. It'll change your life. Yeah. And the other thing is, this has devolved into a uh, Bill and Kyle having a fight over who's going to get Mark and Kyle's. No, I've already, I've already, I've already solidified it. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I'll take tallies. You take marks. That's fair. I'm born and raised in Houston. Yeah, I'll take them. <laughs> I know a lot of West Texas. Never mind me. I can't even see those mark besides Canada. Uh, DWI. Yeah. DWI. So My claims are usually not criminals, though. So, I mean, they're they're just some family issues. Yeah, exactly. But I do everything, but basically the kitty stuff, just because we've got 9/11. No, nah, we don't. Forget it. We will rebuild. <laughs> I mean, you say kitty, you care about that. Child sex assault and stuff. But I've yeah. got four got murders. I got the guy who shot the other dude in bombshells. Can't really talk about it because it's going on right now. But I got murders and ag assaults. I really like the assaults and aggravated assaults because it's, you know, what we do. And, you know, there's self defense, defense of others. Um, Sometimes prostitution. I've been making a lot of funny videos on prostitution. Yeah, but really, not us. Prostitutes are not getting busted. It's always the Johns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I was really yeah. I like it. Say, encourage it, but he's not happy right now. Um, <laughs> you know, I, don't, I, I took him to face out. He was making videos uh-huh. to advertise. He uh-huh. any prostitution. Oh, yeah, was there was there oh, yeah, what's going on? What are we doing? That's the funniest prostitution joke. I'm just. <laughs> Uh, do you have one? No, no. no I'm just kidding. You know. <laughs> no, I don't. Do uh, possession? Have a great... Yeah, he, d- he does a lot of good possession cases. I've got some... I mean, fentanyl is really nasty right now. We get a lot of that. And I had like 4,000 pills of Adderall that all look like Adderall that maybe everybody took in law school. When they tested it, it was all methamphetamine because they're taking the meth, stamping it like pills that we know that doesn't... that isn't meth and selling it out there. So it's pretty crazy. Out Where do you out go? The street. <laughs> well, that's where I was born. I gotta work on your. I mean, we gotta work on. He's not so yeah, your image. Totally you wear? Dark all over the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's weird. The, well, look at me right now. I really, <laughs> what do you wear? Or he looks like a cop. What do I wear? No, no, I wear. I even at fancy restaurants, I don't wear the 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 fanciest shirt I'll have. It's like a hen t-shirt Henley with like three buttons or a V-neck. I like to everybody to be like, he's not in dress code. He must be like a tech billy. It's normally yeah. like pantaloons, cod piece, flowy shirt, Crocs, feather, a lot of cro- Crocs, a lot of Crocs, and they're like yeah. a law tiger shirt. Oh yeah, one yeah. coop earring. Yeah, always on the wrong ear. Mm. And I don't even know which one's the right or wrong. That was a little bit before my time. Show both. It's not that there's anything right or wrong about it. I think we're past that, maybe. So, fun fact about the hoop earring: Morgan Freeman started wearing hoop earrings, solid gold, in case anything ever happened to him. That would be enough to cover the calf skin. I learned that today. It's on, I on Instagram, so I'm not sure if it's true, but uh, it's on the internet, it's probably it sounds pretty yeah, cool. it's on Yeah, I mean, I want to believe it. Yeah. And, yeah, thank you. I, I mean, prefer a dangly cross. I, li- I like that. So it's like even more dwarf fly. Oh, yeah. Dangly yeah. cross, I can see that for you. Yeah, but I don't know your real hair, so I'm just going off that. I'm a little edgy, so I try to steer away from the yacht rock scene. You know, like, Ooh, that's where a lot of coke is. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I know. Apparently, yeah. the yacht rock yeah. is in yeah. Aspen, Colorado. Yeah. That's what the youngsters look here for. So, so I, I followed a lot of your crazy adventures on the internet, huh? What's next? You have seen, like I said earlier, doing all kinds of nutty stuff. What's the next adventure for Mark and or Mark and Tally together? Are you well, planning like... Always going to be Mark and Tally because he's... I'm younger than him, so I'm, he's got no, a diamond. Hold on. Let me ask this different <laughs> way. Is there anything that you that he said, let's go do this, and you're like, no, this is a perfectly good plan. I'm not jumping out of it. No. Uh, the only thing we won't do 
is the fucking zorbing again. Oh, well, we already done. Well, we're not doing it again. Zorbing was, the, I will never do that again. The big plastic that is, hamster ball. The, the hamster ball. Uh, you get into it, the oh water, and they roll you down the hill, and, and, um, and it's like... Death in Costa trap. Rica, it was a fucking death trap, and it is you go like head over. Oh, and no, you have no. no idea which way you you are, and you're gonna throw up for sure. No, and they put water in it because yeah, to help because you don't want the skin to fall off. But then they're drowning you. It is like waterboarding, going down a hill. It it was the worst thing of my life. And then I got out, and Mark's ball came down, and it was empty. <laughs> so because so I, I speak Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, what was that yelling? That was in, in uh, Yahweh. Yeah, no, it was, Mare, Mare. you know, and he's like, what? And I was like, no, stop and get the fuck out of this thing. So you go in a little bit and then you, then you, no, yeah, I rolled like, I get out of the way. And it was insanity. I was like, I was claustrophobic as shit. It was yeah. small. There was water coming in or drowning in there. I was like, nope, I am out of there. How much did you pay? Really, water no, water really was an option. Oh, probably like 70 like bucks. 70 bucks. They were yeah. waterboarded. They were self water. But, oh, she does, she, it makes me nervous. She, we've been trying to go cage diving with the gray whites off South Africa, but they're moving, actually. They're saying uh, it's better at Baja. Yeah, on makes, Bay Island in Baja. That makes me a little nervous. I'm like, ah, fucking hell. Like, what are we doing about I this? mean, uh, cage, the cage doesn't bother me, but, like, the... Cold water in the dark. You know, now they're doing... You know, Australia, you can uh, dive in the, what are this, that algae and then the reefs and stuff. That kind of nah, brings me out a little bit because you never know it's going to come around the corner. Yeah. Like, I, I prefer the Caribbean, nice white blue, hundreds of sharks, no big deal. He did it's tell me no. I really wanted to hike Kilimanjaro this last year. Okay. And he was not interested in camping it's for just a lot of walk. Eight days. Yeah, and it's not like. He, and he's like real. a tent outside. And how do you even spell Kilimanjaro? You know, I'm with you, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Come on. I do it's Jaro, yeah. Years ago, my daughters decided they really wanted to go camping. And I said, okay. And they didn't really know. I mean, they were very young. They were probably six and eight or younger. Six and eight, probably, though. Going to be 9 11 soon. Yeah, it will be. I can't wait. Three years. And just, we won't forget. <laughs> and we took them. I took them to the, the Hyatt Lost Pines. Uh -huh. we, got a, we got a suite. Uh, we had a giant porridge and a hot tub. I'm in. And my daughters were like, this is great camping. Can we join the Girl Scouts? And I was like, no. You know, the Girl Scouts do a different kind of camping. Uh, but if you ever want to go camping again, let me know. And then a couple of years later, they said they want to go camping again. And I said, we, well, we can't go back to Lost Pines. So we went to that uh, the hotel in Houston that has the Lazy River. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Marriott? Yeah, we went to the yeah. Marriott, which is like... Camping. Yes. <laughs> Wait, first of all, it's a lazy river in the shape of the greatest state in our union. Kansas? Kansas? Wait, I, 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 shockingly, no, it's Texas. A lot of people get those two confused when they're like, what's the greatest state? Everybody's like, can't, can't. I was like, add, 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 add Aspera then. Per Aspera. Yeah. <laughs> Idaho. You know, Kansas is almost a perfect square. Thanks a lot, Missouri. We're great. We are going or to Missouri. Texas Tech TCU Thursday oh. in Lubbock, and then we're going to Aspen Friday, but. No more. No, we're like, hey, you have a house in Aspen? We have an office. Oh, oh yep. <laughs> that for us, for that is that uh, uh, in we in have an bar. office. If you work on the hours, we work so much. Sometimes we sleep at our desks. <laughs> Been there. If you Which are visiting and you, you have from the Department of the Treasury, <laughs> stop by any time to examine the files. <laughs> where we meet our clients as well. Yeah, um, lots of clients. Just come sit on the. Ouch. How often? From the futon. <laughs> What's the most serious injury you guys e either have ever had related to your crazy sporting efforts? Or was it just a waterboarding on big yeah, tiny like balls of death? I was dying. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, was, I was like, I've never been injured. I tore my ACL wakeboarding. That was about it. But, um. Oh, you got narked once. I did. Yeah, at 100. I was like, I'm going down to 100. And then I was like, oh my God, the world closed in. And I started hiking. Wait, I mean, went down to 100. When we were scuba diving, we were going down to 100 feet. And I'm like, uh, which you're not supposed to be at. I mean, Patty certifies you up to like 35, maybe 60 feet. And we're down at oh, 100. We're in the Cayman. Zero fucks give it. It's a wall. Yeah. And it's, yeah, a wall. And then NARC, NARC feels like you're in top. Like I was having a full on panic attack. And I was like, I'm going to swim up. And I was like, I had to control my breathing. Like, yeah. And we had not scary. been down there very long. That he just started. Me out. Yeah. I mean, in circles, I'm very confused. Yeah, because you start panicking, and I was like, was I'm not going down there again. No, he, look at that hat. He doesn't panic. Forrest Gum doesn't panic. No. It, but I dived lower than 100? Uh, I don't know. Not, not yet. Not yet. I, I didn't know any. I thought 100 sounded like a 
for a reasonable amount. Yeah, I thought it sounded like a, I thought it sounded like a pretty round. I'm like, yeah, hey, it's not that bad. Yeah, that's where all the good stuff is. Yeah. yeah. Now, Treasure. Titanic uh, people were they were down there like they were like five thousand feet. Yeah, not doing that. It wasn't the depth that killed him. It was the it was the gold. I think. Did you just make that up? Yeah, I think it was the pressure that killed him. FBI. <laughs> <laughs> you know who really killed him? Rose. To go back to the legal side, okay. <laughs> so these these things when you do these out of country like Costa Rica or Mexico, and you you guys have all seen this as Piaulers, you get a call from someone. I was in Costa Rica and I had this happen to me, and uh, I want to sue the resort in Costa Rica. It's a what? If you thing. are you so for the most that. part, for the most part, you're you're shit out of luck. Mm -hmm. That's a If you're in Mexico, in Cancun specifically, call me because just call. Me. Do you have an office okay. there? I don't, but I haven't practiced there. Oh, do you really? In well, I, I mean, maybe some American uh, okay. uh, hotels that are American insured yeah. as well, but they have like a spider web of LLC. Now, is this the, is this Bill Ogden talking, or is this this Please. character that you're? Uh, whatever your name is. This is, I'm not a Mesut Acker, Pete. I didn't even know we were dressing up today. All right. Yeah, I was going to say. Just, maybe, I, I, this guy that is sitting in front of me, I believe it has the Cancun and all this. He did. I, oh, yes. <laughs> he, 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 everything I just said about Cancun is true. Yeah. Um, there are a number of hotels that are American owned. Mm -hmm. uh, they're booked in on American.coms and they're American insured out of New Jersey. The problem is figuring that all yeah. out is very difficult. Um, but hey, every once in a while, I have a guy who tells me how to figure that out. I didn't do it on my own, and I haven't now. So yeah, I've done a couple of cases down there, and I'm doing more, and, and it's not hard. But generally speaking, be prepared if you go out of country and you get an accident. Yeah, generally speaking, if you're out of country, best case scenario, they cover the economic damages. There are no non-economic damages. Can you buy like a massive UMUIM policy when you travel? Uh, yeah, you so UIM International does kick into play, but it kicks in. It, they'll they because you're international, they'll consider the minimum policy limits of whatever that country is. It must not zero. It's hard to get more minimum than zero. You're telling me? <laughs> State Farm, take notes. Do you have Todd Ogden? Do you have my father? You have take to notes. pay. You All have right. to pay for the poll that almost killed you. I mean, I, I had a guy that was she in the four wheeler. You read, brother? Like, yeah, I got it. You rented, that. rented yeah. yeah, ball of death. I had a I had a client who was snorkeling and uh, in Mexico, and the boat started its engine and reversed, and it this is this is horrible, and this is not a joke. It uh, you're wearing a bunny you know, costume. Yeah, I'll stop being serious. Jesus, <laughs> it, it chopped up the worst parts that you could chop up. Oh my God. And it led to a divorce. Wow, I mean, Kyle's talking about me. This is, it's just, I was just going, yeah. And there was nothing, I mean, there was nothing we, nothing anybody could do. It was like a dude on a boat. Well, how is he swimming? Just like this? Yes, and then like, yeah, I'm wondering, I was like, out. Oh, or I'll let you know when it gets to a certain size. No, no, no. I've never had, I was. What is that big old engine and find this little? I, 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 hey, I learned it on. Hey, I learned on the no, lottery. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware. Of, <laughs> let's just say he was a periscope dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, uh, right, yeah. he's breaching one. Uh, uh, no, <laughs> so, Dally, what's what is the most interesting case you've ever handled? It can be a small case with interesting facts or interesting facts in a big case. Which what's one that sticks out to you is like I will always remember that one. I mean, th there are just so many like absurd things that happen all the time, but not just like in general cases. Um, just absurd things that happen, like just how would I ever think that I'm like screaming on the phone, like fighting over a parakeet or a, like a. 10 year old George Foreman grill. Oh, they're gonna say 10 year old? <laughs> yeah. George Foreman grill seems weird. Yeah, it seems weird, but right? Great. Right. Well, yeah. My name is Lon Stallion. What are, what's some ways that people really screw their divorce up case by doing stupid things? Like, you had bought some, don't ever do these things. Oh, well, the first thing is that people think that it's a lot of people don't wanna get divorced. And they're like, if I'm just nice now, then it will get better or they'll give me what I want. And then we get, eight months, 10 months down the road, and nope. it didn't get better, and now they want more. And now you're like, oh shit, we actually are getting a divorce, and now I've just been so nice and like basically walked myself out of all the things that I wanted in this divorce. That seems like it would be common. It is so common and it's so irritating. I get, Mark 
will attest to this. I get very irritated with my clients when they're doing dumb things, you know? So I, mean, I think they can I, get through it without a fight, and so they give everything up. Well, and they think the, 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 probably the, the why it. for the husband is going to come back if I just, like, do go along with them for a while. And they, they don't. Once you've hired a divorce attorney and you're down the road, you know, like, non-suits do happen, don't get me wrong, but, like, I don't know, 15% of the time? Like, if you, that, huh? if you flip that switch, like, most people are getting a divorce, yeah. you know? Or that they're complaining about. I have a question. Uh, we've had a couple of family law lawyers on prior, but I have a question. So sure. how often is it that divorce is filed or they separate and then one or both immediately start sleeping with other people? Oh, all the time. I assume that's something yeah. that I think it started before. Oh, well, for sure. Yeah. They're about to be with guys. Because that's usually the driving force statistically. I think it's 50 50 now. Really? Yes. Yeah. Right? I would say, yeah. And me too. Sure. You get women. They're just, yeah, you know. Well, if you uh, think about it, everything's got to be equal. If you were a woman, you Everything's got to be equal. If you're a woman, you would totally be banging another. Oh, kids. totally. Dude. Big hoe. All of my dirty hoes. All of my. Not that there's anything. No, we got to cut that. We got to cut that. All right. So, yeah, wrapping up, let's, let's go back. And some, some positive, good official things. So, Mark, uh, uh, starting out in a firm, uh, a young lawyer takes some cojones. So, what? How did that go in your mind? You in what? If, uh, two? That was that was nine years because we've been open since 2011. So we were licensed in 03. Yeah. So eight years. Um, I had like sixteen thousand dollars in my bank account and just went and opened the door. And my dad was like, "Well, I'll if you need it, but." Well, you don't need a lot of capital, you know, but at the same time, when I left Trichter, I was getting 16 calls a month just for me. So I knew I already had that pipeline and, and I was just like, all right, I rented an office from a buddy, started up the website, you know, had the letterhead, had business cards made, brought a paralegal with me and you never work so hard as you do when you're working for yourself, you know, and I just fucking worked, man. Like these millennials these days don't really want to work. Hey, some of us do. <laughs> Not me, but some of us. Yeah. You just want to work for seven hundred and ninety-six million dollars. Yeah, nine hundred and million. I am having to say. But you go in. So, what, like, what was the decision matrix? You're there, working at a very good firm, doing well. Like, what did you decide? Like, I want to go do my own thing. It took like six months to a year, and I mean, everybody knows. Like, I'd watched the numbers. I knew what I was bringing in. I was bringing in just as much as. The partner you know and i was like hey and i knew that i had half as many bringing just as much and i was like i want to make partner well you need to do this you need to do that I kept going and going and finally i was like no if i don't and he said he said that if i don't make partner next time i'm gonna leave and he said that sounds like an ultimatum and i was like but it is like i j and that you know i look back and i'm like had he just and i the biggest thing i learned was don't be greedy pay pay your rainmakers pay them money because i would have stayed for probably like two three hundred maybe right that first year i took 750 out you know, and I was like, I made seven hundred fifty thousand, and I'm, you know, it's nothing. But he wasn't paying me like one hundred and ten. I was like, dude, I want maybe like two hundred. You could have kept me, but instead, I took off, and you know, for the rest is history, and just kept going up and up from there. And I was like, all right, is that it? So how much is your bank account now? My sale is sixteen thousand. Yeah, 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 sixteen thousand. that original. He's got, he's not saying he's a guy. He's in an island. And then operating the rest of it's in town. He's named. And the rest of it is what? Where is he in this office at the? That's bad. What's a calendar? Yeah, yeah. We did have a family lawyer on. I think the question was, is your husband who's a lawyer? How does he feel about you being a family lawyer? And she was like, oh, that's really nice to me. Yeah, and he said, oh, why don't you tell him, babe? Why don't you fucking tell him? Tell us. Uh, Mark loves to tell people how I talked him out of a prenup. Oh, jeez. The church cases that I want. It's her cases. Oh, my God. I didn't hear what you said. All I heard was cha ching, cha ching. Well, because I was like, what did what happened? Because I was asking, I was like, you think I should have gotten a prenup? And she was like, no. As your lawyer, fuck yeah, you're an idiot for not getting one. And I was like, but you told me that I didn't need one. She's like, because I love her. I was a yeah. lawyer at the time. Yeah, and like, what the fuck? Like, I should have, you had to tell me to say. There's probably when John Ramsey slid the check towards you, and you were like, hey, should I have a prenup? Mm -hmm. So now she's so like, well, you don't need one. <laughs> but now I'm invested in the firm. I work so much harder. This is persuasiveness. I don't believe this. I'm on his side. All right. I don't believe this. I believe, I believe in you, Tally. So. Yeah. Yeah. I she's a great deal in Lubbock. We, in Lubbock, we worked like banker's hours. I was at happy hour every day. This man makes me work. 
Like we don't go home until like seven or eight every night. So well, I ain't yeah. earning every penny, ladies. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last question. So you're, we've alluded to this, so you're very good at social media. So how does that work? Do you have people do that for you? Do you come up with the concepts? Um, so we have a marketing group that, which I, so I was with Scorpion, which I still have friends with Scorpion, but I have too many. I don't know how you can market when you have all these different lawyers and push one ahead of the other. So I've been with a group since the beginning that only has one criminal lawyer in this market. Nice. I, they have another, they have one of my buddies in Fort Worth, one guy in San Antonio, cause I don't, uh, I don't market against them. But if you really want to have a marketing team, they do my SEO, they do my PPC, they do a lot of uh, blogs and web content. I approve everything, right? They do my social media and then we do our, but they're just for me. So I really do love them and appreciate them. But then I have a guy in house that does all my grassroots. We have a couple more cars. We have lighters and fun stuff and koozies and uh, glasses and trying to, we love the bar industry. And then he, he and I come up with our TikToks. And so we just get, we just started sitting around the office brainstorming, coming up with TikToks or t-shirt ideas. But I think you really got to have like all the different channels. What's the name? Decent Law Firm? No, the, uh, the marketing, <laughs> uh, marketing group. Uh, their name is Ball and Spots, B-A-A-L and Spots. Okay. And they're a family run. They, they started, what was their original name? Um, I forgot who they were with and then they broke off and they, I stayed with them. It's a husband, wife team and their friend Maher that's also married, but um, it's a family run uh, marketing firm. Nice. Would be great. I, I use or strategy group, but I'm always, I'm always listening for other people that are competitive. Uh -huh. And that's ORR. O-R-R strategy. <laughs> okay, so strategy group. I, I like I like your nurse's outfit. <laughs> you know, or, and, uh, you say they're O-R-R strategy. Oh, <laughs> I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah, you are. Uh, he's, he's stepping in what you're laying down. <laughs> All right, Mark and Tally, where can people find y'all on web, socials? Where, where are some of the handles, websites? We're at the thetexastrialattorney.com. The Colorado trial attorney.com. <laughs> Come on by the office in Aspen for a cocktail. No, but we're in the Heights. Um, TikTok. TikTok. TX not guilty. TX not guilty, but is that our. Mm -hmm. TX not guilty? That's a great TX not guilty. How about Instagram? They want to shoot it. Oh, not, oh, I think it's Thiessen Law Firm on, on TX oh, yeah, not guilty. Yeah. But then some lawyers stole TX not guilty from my, my Instagram. What's his name? Dox him right now and I'll go after him. So <laughs> I've got a, a pretty big follow. It's a lady. What's her name? <laughs> Diana. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Diana. Her name is Carrie O'Neill. <laughs> Something they did with the credit. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it was, it was, nice try. Where, where are y'all's on us? We're at 12th and a half in Studewood. I bought an, we bought an old church. And yeah, we know. It's window. gorgeous, by the way. Have you been? Very well. No, I've driven by it a number of times. Okay. Yeah. We're at uh, between Yale and Shepherd on 11. We're okay. right at High Sophia. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. Well, I think unless y'all have any other questions, I think we can probably. Oh, thank you. I mean, unless y'all have any other questions. <laughs> <laughs> that was a real. That was real. That was good. That was, that was better than what I thought was, so was going to come out. Someone who hates Forrest Scouts when you see it, this really. I'm not here. Come on, man. Here. Can you? I'm just going to say. I'm here. What's up, is Peter? How smart of a man are you? I'm sorry, I ruined y'all Black Panther party. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I could stay here and keep asking them questions all night long. I don't know how much more Bill I can tell. I think you should go back to Green Bow Alabama. <laughs> I can quote the whole movie. Yeah, you know the lot of this movie. A movie you hate, man. If we are not a relation, <laughs> you're getting better as it goes to. Oh, his ball would be gums. <laughs> well, all right. So what, with that, we should let you two go. Thank you so much for making the time. What are you guys going to be for Halloween? Is this six? I know you've got a whole house full of costumes you bought out the costume store oh i made this this is 20 years old and amazing, amazing. So, yeah, no, this is back this is my original one because i went as this in two right out of college and so i used to wear this intoxicated all the time so i made this 20 years ago now they have them but i still brought my original one but i like it but we for want, halloween we were do you, do you want to do it thank you they did our we were thunder and lightning but we had a whole thing go ahead we had a thing but it makes more sense when you're in the costume but it's i am thunder and i'm lightning and together we, we are perfect storm no. i like i'm the bit what is weird but i knew <laughs> <laughs> our, i feel like you were lightning you were some kind of a rainbow she was thunder, thunder. and then thunder. one of the kids was a rainbow and the other one a tornado, tornado. a tornado that yeah. one is wearing a raincoat so. yeah we're the perfect storm. That's all. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Pete, take us on. Mash it. Yep. Subscribe it with Instagram. Nailed it. TikTok. Yep. Pound it.
Uh, can find us on iTunes and, and Apple, Apple, Spotify, and Apple, Apple iTunes. Oh, Apple iTunes. Yes, yeah. We're on all the. And, and any other place you find your podcast. At any other place you find your podcast. Thank you, Bill. Happy Halloween. Or thank you, Talent. Happy Halloween. And see you next week. Good night. <laughs> Y'all, I was a. Thank you.